Today, we are going to use some watercolor paints and see how those drastically change how we do cards. And these are super inexpensive and a fun way to add to your background and your card making experience. Let's go. Thanks for joining me today on this gentastic journey that includes card crafting. So today we're going to start with a stamp and some VersaFine Black Onyx ink. And it's a pigment ink, so it stays a little bit wet so that we can emboss it with some embossing powder, which is what we'll do. And I'm using my We Are Memory Keepers stamp positioner. I often have to do this over again. I, my first find, I think, needs to be re-inked. And I'm using this on a piece of scrap paper that I used from a previous video where I screwed up the back side of it. <laughs> so you see a little bit of ink at the top. So I'm going to re-ink this a couple of times and make sure we get a nice dark image. From here I'm going to use some stamping up clear embossing powder. This will allow us to have color go around the image because it's embossed. And so the color, color will go all around those black edges of the image. So this is a great way to stamp and then do your watercolors. And this is my silicone mat that I use below it. So I'm going to put this in, a, it's an old Farberware metal pan and you can see it's got a lot of cracks in it so it's got a little rust and so it was time to be either given away or in this case I decided to use it for my embossing. And what it does is the pan gets a little heated so my paper doesn't get curled up so it's almost like it's heating the top and the bottom kind of like you would in a toaster. <laughs> this just helps my paper from moving around too much and so I don't have to burn my fingers. So this is nice and dry and like I said, those black image will not be affected by the watercolor paints. These are just some cheap watercolor paints I got off of Amazon and I will link everything below. I took out some paint brushes, but I do have a paintbrush that has a water reservoir that I will probably use instead. And I am a labeler, so <laughs> I labeled those just so I knew what it was in my craft area and as you could say, I took out this little watercolor pen and it has a reservoir for water at the tip of it in the clear section. And I watched some watercolor videos by real watercolor professionals. <laughs> they always say to put water all over your image first and that lets the watercolor know that that's where you want the image to be. So it's not going to creep out into the outsides of the image. So just a little tip that I learned as I was trying to learn how to do watercolor painting. And I am by no means an expert with watercolor. I'm just trying to get some color down on the paper because this will be a background for me. I took out a rag and I'll just use that to kind of wipe off the excess paint. And this little container that I have for water is actually like an old candy container. And I thought, what a perfect way. I could almost have like one for each color if I needed to. And you'll see later on, I kind of mix the inks a little bit. And so to prevent that, you can fill up some of these little water areas with water for different colors of the inks. So I'm just getting color all over. And as you can tell, this is quite sped up because this takes a little bit of time just to get the ink down. I kind of want it to look a little messy, a little out of the lines because I want it to look like it's a watercolor image. I'm not looking for it to be perfect. And I'm not doing a lot of shading. Sometimes you'll see here that I'm shading that pink with a little bit of purple on the edges and I noticed that if I put a little bit of ink on the edges of the petals and then I go back around and then shade it back in it does give it a little bit of shading. Here I'm just going back through and making sure that all the flowers have some color on them and the little insides of the flowers as well. Now I'm going to color in the background, so I'm using a medium color green just to color these stems, and then I'll come back in with some lighter green to fill it in, so I'm letting it kind of dry for a second here. I am not much of a watercolor person. As you can see, this is the first time I've had these for a long time and I just really don't use them. So I thought, why not play with them today? We have lots of our supplies that sometimes we think we need them, absolutely need them and have to have them, especially if we see somebody do something really cool with them. So it's important to get them and use them. And for me, this is a great way to do it. So next I'm just going to put a bunch of color down on a, on a piece of paper. And I wanted this to look sort of rainbowish. I don't have it in the rainbow order 
necessarily, but just putting some colors down on the paper. And again, not trying to be really perfectionistic about this. I'm really just trying to slap some color down on the paper and I'm going to use this later on. I was hoping to use some white die cuts. I have some pre-cut out die cuts that I thought we could use for this. So I'm trying to make it a pretty bold background with these watercolors. The nice thing about watercolors is you can make them as dark or as light as you want. The less water you use, the darker they are, and the more water you use, the kind of the lighter, more see-through they are. Okay, and I cut this down some because this is just me putting some ink down so that we have a nice full color background. These paints were a little harder on my silicone mat than I thought they'd be, so I sprayed it down with some water. So this is me just putting a few squiggles. I wanted to have a background that just looked a little bit abstract here, and so this is just me playing around. This is actually a lot of fun. If you want some stress relief, just do something like this. I had so much fun doing this. It was quick and it was easy, and I wasn't really sure where I was going to go. I've mentioned to you guys before that this is my craft time too, so I don't usually do prep I'll prep what I want to work with sometimes, not always, but sometimes. And in this case, I was like, you know, I really want to use my watercolors that I've never used before. And so that was the hope for today. But I really had no plans of what my cards were necessarily going to be, except for as I'm doing this, I'm kind of like, oh, you know, what would be nice with this would be. And so I'll take out some of those things and show you what those are later on. And this one is different than the other two because it's got more white in the background. Obviously a little too much white because I decide I'm going to flick a little bit of some little dots on the back, some little water. So I'm using a little bit of water, a little bit of paint, and just flicking my finger on the paintbrush to get some nice little water dots all over, paint dots all over. So here's where you can see I spray everything down with water and then it really didn't come off all that well. So I grabbed some alcohol. That also really didn't do much much difference there. So just a fair warning. <laughs> and so look, these silicone mats are fairly inexpensive. I just use them to, it helps the paper to stick a little bit better and not move around so much. And it also protects my craft space from getting ink on it like this. Okay, so I have this cute stamp set and it's got lots of these different, these are cherry tree branches, if I'm a guessing person. <laughs> and I thought it would look pretty because there's so much white if I stamp these in black. So I'm gonna put this on my stamp positioner just in case I need to do this more than once, plus there's so many stamps. And I'm using my Memento ink here. You didn't see it, but I am using Memento ink. And the nice thing about my watercolor paints is they dried really fast, so I didn't have to do a lot of drying time in between. And you can see just a little bit of this didn't show up so great, so I'm just re-inking just a few parts of this so that they show up nice and bright. And that's another really pretty background. And then I'm making sure that I take the ink off of my stamps. I decide to trim this down with my long bladed Tim Holtz scissors. I take out my die cut stickers and wood pieces container. And those of you that watched my craft room organization <laughs> video, you know that I absolutely love these boxes and I labeled them all and so it makes me stay really organized. So these are just little plastic pockets that I use to keep these kinds of things in and I try and keep them organized by similar shapes. I plan to cut this in a diagonal and I want to have something that's in between the pieces. And so I like these little black flowers. They have a shimmer to them, so they're real pretty. And then for this very bold, bright <laughs> background, I want to do something similar. And so this one, I think I'm going to use these long pieces. There's like little birds and little wheels and little bird carriers or bird houses in them. So I just take a few of those out. This is me just playing around. And I like kind of that lace look for that other one, but I get distracted. <laughs> And this last one, I'm not sure if I want to put little pieces around it. And you can always, even though these are in like these muted tones, these mauves and tans and greens, you can always ink them with some of your inks if you wanted to, or even your watercolors, if you wanted to change the colors of them. So here I'm just trying to decide what it is I want to do with this piece and I'm just playing around. So I wanted you to see this part because I think it's important to see the thinking and you know that if you've seen my videos before, 
or whenever I tap my finger, I'm trying to think about something. So I changed my mind. I don't really want these little pieces around that square flower piece. So I'm pulling out some other things and put all this stuff away and then let's get to creating these cards. I buy a lot of these pre-cut dies online. You can also find them at your dollar stores or your hobby stores as well and I'll try and link anything I can find in the description box below. So I'm taking out my paper trimmer and this is where I want to cut these in a diagonal and so I'm just lining them up cutting them into a diagonal and then I'll, this one I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it because I don't think that this little square lace piece is going to quite cut. So I'm going to cut the this one into a diagonal as well. This one's a little bit longer, it's more of a triangle. So it'll look, have a little bit different look than that square piece did. Uh, I'm also going to trim this down a bit because I'm going to want to have a little border. And I thought it would be easier to trim it down while it was still together like this so that the edges are nice and straight. Then, because I'm going to put those little black flowers in between, I decided to cut out the centers to give myself a little bit more space. And you'll see I use those later on to decorate the envelope and the inside of the card. Here's my thought on this. I wanted to kind of put these almost like a lace inset, or a little flower inset, I guess. But they kind of feel lacy. All those little white holes in the leaves of the flowers are actually cut out so it's a very pretty piece and I just put some removable tape just so I could line these up and see kind of where I what I was working with so I can take that removable tape off later but I wanted to see how I was going to line these up and unfortunately they don't really line up where you can put like the leaf edges together so I'm trying to figure out what would look best because it looks a, a little off if you're trying to line up all the tips of those flower petals. So I end up then kind of cocking them all off center. It takes me a moment, but we get there. And I'm just putting some removable tape on here so that they kind of stay where I planned for them to stay. And then I'm trying to decide now what I want to do with these. Do I want to just put them on the on the card base? Do I want to pop them up somehow? Because they're so intricate, I was thinking I would use some acetate. So here you see I pull out my acetate and I was going to put them under the acetate, but they're so pretty and they have all that sparkle. So I decided I would put the acetate underneath them. So I'm popping these two background pieces onto some foam tape. And if I had thought about it in advance a little bit better, and you always think about these things uh, after you've done it and you, you're watching what you've done, but it would have been nice to have popped that acetate down onto these little triangle pieces before I put the foam tape on because then the acetate would have popped out a little bit more as well. But it works out fine the way I do it. It still has a lot of different dimensions because the acetate will be a little bit closer to the card base. These triangle pieces will be a little bit away from that. So here's where I was like, oh darn it, why didn't I do that first? <laughs> and I didn't want to pull up off the, all the foam tape. That really never works all that well for me. In order to save some of my acetate, I just cut a little bit off because I'm not going to need it all to be on there. And I will link the acetate that I use, but it's, you could use any sort of acetate. You can even use sometimes the some of your craft supplies come with a piece of acetate inside of the packaging. So I'll use that as well. So no need to buy it if you already have it. It's a nice thing about all of all of what we're doing. We're just playing with our craft supplies. So you could be using any kind of paints, any kind of stamps. You could have cut out these die cuts. You could have used some lace. You could have used anything you have. Hopefully this is just giving you ideas. I'm not intending to say this is exactly what you have to use. I put most of what I use in the description box just to make it easy for you if it is something that you want to purchase. But this, the whole idea behind this is that you can do this with what you have. So I put some foam dots on these black flowers and I put two so I loaded them up a little bit since the acetate is closer to the card base and it isn't popped up these two foam dots will make sure that these black flowers are a little bit more popped up and I'm going to just push those little edges underneath and we'll get those attached to the acetate and I forgot to take the backing off of this last flower and I can't figure it out until now <laughs> but if you're ever worried about foam being enough you can always put a drop of glue on top of the foam when you once you've taken the backing off the foam tape and that will ensure that it is secure then I decided to take these little edge pieces that I cut off and just add them on 
just for a little bit more because those edges had a little bit too much white space for me. Certainly not necessary, just something I decided to do. And I'm just cutting a piece of foam here so that I have just a little bit of that, that little, other little piece. So I think this came out really cute. So I'm trying to finish the inside of the card and I'm not putting a sentiment on this card. This is kind of a nice like note card if you wanted to write somebody a note or I like to sometimes not put sentiments on the outsides of my cards or on the insides so that I could just use them for whatever I need them for. You know, if it's a graduation or a lot of graduations coming up, then I have a little bit of option. I tend to put flowers and things like that in the bottom left corner because that is not usually where I put my, my signature line, whatever you want to call it. I don't don't put it in that corner so that's why I use that corner for any sort of decorations I do on the inside of the card. So I think that looks cute yeah and I'm going to put some embellishments on those flowers and I think it's really pretty so I'll show you what that looks like at the end. Okay on to the next card and this is our card that looks a little rainbow-ish. I thought I would kind of follow the lines of the paint that I used. I've got some embossing folders I thought I would emboss it because it is so straight and narrow. It's such a busy piece that you really can't tell that it's all that embossed. So I'll run this through my off Nova die cutting and embossing machine. This is a perfect little size for me. It folds up real nice and small. It's nothing fancy. I got it off of Amazon and it's very inexpensive. So I will link that as well below. So back to me trying to figure out what I want to do here with this card. I really like these little birds on a on these little string pieces or lace and some wheel wagon wheels looking things. I think it's cute. I don't love it. I keep playing around with it and I'm like, eh, that's okay. That's okay. But it's not wow me in any way. I was like, I could put some Wink of Stella on there, put some little more interest on there, but then I go with a totally different thought. And so I have bring, up, bring out these big leaves and some big flowers and some butterflies and I'm playing around with those. So again, I'm showing you this because just so you could see kind of the thought process. We don't all have to know exactly what to do. We could play around, see what works. I really love these flowers. I found these at my grocery store, my Myers grocery store, and they were so cheap. I think they were $1.99 and they're all up on foam tape already and they've got gems in them already. And I think they're super cute. I use them for my Easter card and I have some left over. They aren't really the bright colors and they're kind of fancier than this rainbow in the watercolor kind of abstract looking. I'm playing around with them seeing what I what I might want to do with these and again that blue doesn't really work. The purple's better but I'm still not thrilled. So then I thought maybe I'd pull out some smaller butterflies but don't like that either. What do you guys think? Would you have done the flowers? Because it's not what I go with. <laughs> I'm going to turn this into a thank you card and I don't realize it here but this die set doesn't have the s on the end of thanks so I think it would should have probably been like part of a thank you but I don't have the y-o-u we'll see that I die cut it out before I realize this <laughs> and it causes me a little bit of angst but we fix that problem too I do sometimes like when you die cut out a sentiment on pretty background paper too. Like sometimes I always go with a plain paper or white paper, but it's fun to sometimes cut it out on background paper as well. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to cut off the edges because I embossed this. I'm just cutting the little edges off so that it has an edge when I put it on the card base. Here's the card base and I'm going to play around with where those flowers, those leaves are going to fit. And then I'm going to just mark where that thank you is on that piece of paper that I watercolored. And then I'm going to cut this down and that will, will cut down my background paper a little bit, but I think it will come out real pretty and will coordinate nicely. So that I'll just put up there and then I'll put that thank you below it. So I'll die cut out that thank that I still haven't figured out only says thank. And I always use some removable tape when I am die cutting just so that things don't shift around and if I have to send it through more than once then it's in the right spot and it's not going to have an awkward cut. So I'm using my reverse tweezers, so sort of craft tweezers, and I just want to use the inside, not the outside, but I always save that outside so I can use it for something else. I still haven't figured it out yet, but it doesn't have the S, but I definitely like the way that looks with the die cut out sentiment. So I found a congratulations, I think it is, that has an S at the end of it, and I'm going to die cut out that end of it, and that will give me the S that I'm missing in my thanks. I could not find a Y-O-U. I do have some separate letters, but they look so different from the thanks 
like in the U but not different enough where it would look like I did it on purpose. This is from the same set and so the S is in the same font. So I'm going to glue the top piece onto my card base and I have just a little white border around that. I used my Ranger Multimedium Matte Finish glue for that and for the intricate stuff I always use my Barely Art Precision Craft glue. Here's where I pull in the S, trimming it off of <laughs> whatever I cut it out from and I will add that to it. I love my tweezers. Do you guys all use tweezers? They are fantastic just to keep your fingers from getting all gluey. Also just my fingers sometimes don't don't work with little small pieces. So here I've come back to my little leaves. I like these leaves. I think they're really pretty and it makes that crazy bold background not seem so bold because it's cutting off some of it but you can still see it peeking through behind and so I'm going to put my Barely Art Precision Craft glue just on the veins of this paper and I just dot it around some of the edges as well. I'll have to trim this anyway. These are real thin die cuts as well so again these were pre-cut out. I bought them cut out like this and so now I'm just pulling out some different embellishments that I might want to use because certainly the leaves were, they were nice, but you need something else. So I have these little elastic, or I don't know what they're made out of, but they're little flowers, and I thought it would look cute like they're growing in these big, huge leaves. <laughs> And because they're in so many different colors, it kind of matches the idea of the rainbow. I had fun with these. I've never used these before. I've had them for a while. Picked them up at, I believe, at Hobby Lobby in the United States here. I've never had a chance to use them. So I'm just going to put a dot of glue on the back of each of these, place them around. And I think that adds a little bit of fun to, to this card quite a bit. A very different card than what I first <laughs> envisioned with those birds on, on a vine. I think this came out really cute. And I'll show you at the end what I do on the inside of this and the envelope as well. Okay, on to the last card, and this was the first background that I made, and I wanted to put some lace to connect the two sides together, and I'm putting a black background. This is a really pretty kind of shiny, it reminds me of a chalkboard because it's like matte, but it's a little shiny. It's really pretty, and so that'll make that lace piece really pop out, but I can't really decide how I want to do it, and unfortunately with these die cuts that I got, none of them are the same. So you can see here I took out another one, but they're so different. And you've got that big piece in the middle. So I didn't really love that. I think if I had thought about it, I would have maybe fussy cut out some flowers and put that in the center. And that would have rendered that line from being so obvious. But I just play around with this and I'm going to show you this one at the end. So you can see I put some gem embellishments on this one. And then I decorated the envelope as well with some of the strips that I had cut out. And then this one, I left it pretty much the way you saw it. I just cut off the edges and then I put a strip of that watercolor paper and you can see these envelopes that I made. If, you're, if you don't know how to make envelopes, I'll link to the video in the description box and right here at the top as well. And this one, I ended up cutting it and using those birds, believe it or not. So I think the birds came out really cute and I put just a small hello sentiment on there and I used some more acetate with that one as well. So with the envelopes looking super pretty, I think these came out really nice and I love the big gems on this one as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. It just lets me know that you appreciated the video. And then also if you would, if you like this type of content, please hit the subscribe button and I create two videos per week. And you can always hit the notification bell when you subscribe and that will notify you every time I create new content. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.